Bill Sorella is a familiar face at Papio South. Not only is he a regular substitute teacher, but for the last eight years he has spoken to freshman U.S. history classes about his experiences as a bomber crewman during the Vietnam War. In this interview, Sorella gives some insight into his time in the war and his teaching career that came afterwards. Well, the one thing about, you know, being a pilot, you know, you, you get to fly the airplane and all that stuff. Well, when the war started, it worked out okay because you have a six-man crew and we're flying all these 12-hour missions out of Guam. So on the long missions, the pilot wanted to take a break and I would go in one seat or the other. So over a period of half a year, you know, I learned all the instruments and, and the fuel panel and how we had to transfer fuel and all that stuff. We became a real crew. We knew our voices. So when I was, I would read a checklist for something, I would know what the pilot's doing when I say that you had to do this, you know. And that, that became very important, especially when we were on bomb runs, because I had a switch back there that I had to think something I had to pull to release the bombs. Everybody, everybody in the plane had something to do with that bomb run. So it was a, it was a team effort. And it becomes life-saving uh, in, in the war, you know. The guy on the ground, he always likes to make sure that his buddy's going to have his back if someone's trying to kill him. So, because then you get into a, the life-threatening situations. I only had a couple of those, so it wasn't too bad for me. See, it was during Vietnam, the war, like, and specifically 1968. Not everybody did make right decisions at the top, let's put it that way. I mean, but the, the guys that were in the military were doing their job. I, I talked to military guys today and says, well, we did what we were supposed to do, you know, we did our part. Uh, but uh, that pulling apart in 1968, I still remember it. I, I still have hard, hard, hard times because we were over there fighting and people were back here just smoking pot and doing all this stuff and criticizing the war and you know there was there were hard feelings but but the thing about it is we never got back together except 911 and it's a sad thing but that's what happens that's everybody gets to take in everything for granted and pretty soon they don't realize you know what the true values are after the war was over, I started looking at our country, and I says, well, wait a minute now. I've just fought a war, and I'm thinking to myself, well, uh, the war is an education. And I was telling something, somebody the other day, I says, we got this thing of inequality in this country, and uh, I, I call it, I call it the, 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 the war of education with the rest of the world. When I was in school, we were number one in everything. Now we're number 17 or something like that. But, you know, you realize that you hate to tell kids this, but they are the best, those are the soldiers in the war and education because the, as well as they do, that's as well as our country does. People ask me, hey, how long am I going to do this? I say, uh, I have fun every day. It's... And I've done it as long now as I did, I had a military course, 28 years. So everybody says, you do what? I says, yeah. I says, I tell the kids, I says, you guys are like medicine to me. I, I come in the morning, and he says, I'm an old guy. I'm going to be 80 years old next year. They ask me, are you going to retire? I says, no, it's not in my vocabulary. I mean, why, why would you not, if you have a job that's fun? You know, I don't make anything, but I don't need to make anything. But life, life is an adventure. You know, like I can't... I'm, I can't even imagine my grandson, you know, with a full ride scholarship to the Institute of Technology, and he's, they put him on the varsity golf team already. He hadn't even walked through the door. It's, being a grandpa is the best job in the world. 